Now, these names might come out of nowhere. Why would you? Ex why would we call them these, even and odd? Well, this is leading us to the next section, right? What's in a name? This is the red function that I showed you earlier, which had even symmetry. And you might have thought to yourself, well, how did I come up with this function? How did I know that it would be symmetrical? Well, this is the actual function here. Uh, it's a bit of a garbled mess, I know, x squared minus x to the 4 and 6, blah, 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 blah. I came up with this function because I knew that it would give me a function with reflectional symmetry. It's an even function. How did I know that? Now there's kind of a clue here in the name, and if you have a look closely at the function that I've given you, it's not random. Have a look particularly at the powers. Pay close attention to the indices. You've got uh, an x squared, you've got an x to the power of four, and an x to the power of six. I knew that this would be an even function because all of the powers are even. And correspondingly, we'll get to this later on, to get an odd function, I'm going to use odd powers. Now, I can see quick examples of this, right? If I just give you, uh, let's suppose, let f of x, actually I just used f of x, so let's come up with a new name, let g of x equal, the simplest even function that most people know about with an even power is x squared. Let's test out our algebraic definition here. If I go back and I say, well, um, if I've got even an even function, it should obey this thing here, right? f of x should equal f of negative x. So I'm just going to test that out. I'm going to put in negative x everywhere I saw x. So what happens? Well, I'm going to do my substitution, like so, and I notice that negative x squared is just negative x times negative x. So there are two negatives there, and they both cancel, leaving me with x times x. This is x squared. In other words, that's the function that we started with, g of x. And I got that function by doing g of negative x. So you can see that x squared there, right, because it's got an even power, it's always going to have those negative uh, factors cancelling out with each other. Um, and we can prove this for anything with an even power. Let's suppose I had a h of x, um, and it was something like 2 to the power of n, where n's a whole number. Um, so I'm going to write that with some fancy notation here, which just means n belongs to the, the set of numbers that are all integers, okay? Now, how would I go about proving that this is also going to be even? Well, I, I'll do it in the same way that I did it with that function g of x. I'm going to test out h of negative x. Okay, what am I going to get here? Well, I'll do the substitution, like so. And if you look closely at this, I'm going to use my index laws. I notice that that negative x is broken up into a negative 1 and an x. And they're raised to the power 2m. Well, you can see here, if I break these two apart, right, I can say I've got negative 1 to the power of 2m, and then I've got x to the power of 2m. Hmm. Now, this negative 1 on the end here, I can write it as negative 1 squared to the power of n, there's the x to the 2n, and you can see here, no matter what n is, if n, like if my n was 3, then this would be x to the power of 6, if my n was uh, 9, then I would have x to the power of 18, so you can see here, no matter what value of n you get, that negative 1 squared is just going to become 1, and 1 to the power of n will just be 1, so I'm just going to get x to the power of 2n, which is the function that I started with, h to the of x. So this is h of negative x, and these two are always going to be identical. Now this is a proof for even functions. Um, I will leave it as an exercise for you guys to have a go at what would happen if uh, we had a function that was odd. Now in order to have an odd function, I don't want the power to be 2n. Um, let's see if I call my function, let's go u. If u of x was equal to x to the power of 2n plus 1, where n's a whole number, you can see whatever uh, value of n you put in there, if I put in, like I tried n equals 3 before, right? Well, this is going to give me a power of, if n equals 3, I'm going to get x to the power of 6 plus 1, which is x to the power of 7. So you can see there's an odd power appearing. So I'll leave it as an exercise for you to have a go at uh, showing that if you start with this guy, there we go, um, you are always going to get, if you test out, u of negative x, you are always going to get negative u 
of x. Give that a go. So what's in a name? The point is that if you come up with even powers, you're going to have an even function. And if you come up with odd powers, you're going to get an odd function. Now it's worth pointing out that even though this is where the name is based, it's not only these kinds of functions that have odd or even symmetry. For example, a function that we're pretty familiar with from trigonometry, sine of x, this has symmetry. Have a look at it closely. What kind of symmetry does it have? Can we reflect it across the y-axis? Would you get the same thing? Um, you wouldn't, would you? Because you can see that the, the, the first crest that you've got there, it's not going to line up to the right spot on the uh, opposite side of the y-axis. This is not reflectional symmetry. This is rotational symmetry. So sine x is an odd function. Um, there is, though, another trigonometric function that has even symmetry, even though this one has odd symmetry. If I gave you the other most common trig function, cos x, this guy is an even function. Can you see why? I can reflect this across the y-axis and it's the same on both sides. So even though sine and cosine are not polynomials, they don't have powers flying around or anything like that, um, this is still an even function and we'll return to this idea a bit later on when we come to the calculus section.